folks, I take Tech Redneck. Uh, we're going to do an unboxing, unboxing of a new company. It's called uh, Tulium. I have been using Yes Welder for the last six months, and I'm going to be very honest. It's the biggest piece of junk I've ever messed with. They're all hype, and I just got sick and tired of having my units break. They're sending me another one, so I'm going with a new company called Tulium. Okay, and right now, even with the uh, Yes Welder stuff on sale, okay, uh, Yes Welder is running about 369 to 340. This one was on sale for 276, and it has exactly the same features and a whole lot less complication to figure out how to use it. This one also comes with a longer cord, okay, and it has a longer uh, MIG. This is also a three in one. It's MIG, TIG, and uh, MMA stick. Okay, you can um, do all three. It does not come with the TIG, uh, the TIG cord. You have to buy that separately. But all the companies are like that. All right, so we're going to do the unboxing here, and we'll come over here and open up the box. You don't have to get down. We're gonna open up the box, show you what you get with it. You get the wheel, do not do not lose this wheel, okay? You get this for your gas, this is also gas as well, okay? Comes with all your your, your settings, okay? Uh, comes with, it's 220 or 110, this is the 220 cord. All right, this is the, Okay, this is the gas cord, comes with, all right, comes with, on the side now, here's your mid cord, all right, do not panic if you don't see the, uh, what do you call it, the, the MMA and the ground cord, because I figured it out, they actually pack it up inside, I repeat, they pack it up inside the machine. I'll pull this out. They pack it very well. It is a little bit bigger than Yes Welder. Okay. My preference is MIG. So I'm going to set this up for MIG. Take the plastic out. The next thing you do is open this up. And there you go. Get a shot of that, please. Okay, where the parts are inside. So don't call Amazon or whoever you got it from. I said, well, I know you don't have the ports. They are inside. Close it up. Okay, this will run 030, 035. And when I turn it on, you'll see how easy the settings are. It also comes with a little slide brush. Woohoo. And first thing I do is take this and plug it into the middle connector, tighten it up. All right, this is your ground cord is going to go in here and your MIG. This uses a European connector style, which I prefer. And that way you don't get, you know, a lot of movement inside where with the European style. It really holds it nice and still. Awesome. Okay, folks. Um, this, we're going to fire this up. We're connecting this to the 221 phase. All right, with the adapter, you get a lot more power. Uh, on this particular setup, uh, I have another gun already set up for 030, or 035. We're gonna set this one up at 030. It also comes with a couple of tips. So what you do is you open this up. Okay, you unscrew this. There is a spring in there, do not lose it. Okay, take the parts, I just lay them in here. They don't go anywhere. Pull this out. There's a spring. Okay. And there's the spring. There's four parts. I use the, the big wire. This does not come with wire. Like some of the other companies give you an intro wire, which is pretty much garbage. Um, I'm going to get the 030, which was here a second ago. Where's the 030? All right, folks. Here's some of the parts. Here's the inside of the case. I've got a spool of 030. I'm using flux wire. 
I find it a lot easier, cheaper than gas, and I don't have to worry about hauling tanks around. Enclosed in here, which I'm not gonna use, is the long MMA stick. Okay, we're not gonna use the stick welder. I have a separate welder for that. Okay, here's the wire, which we're gonna install. Here is your gun, which we install after the wire. This is a 10 foot, I think it's a 10 or 12 foot cord. Nice and long, real heavy duty. They recommend for this to guess being 75, 25, 75, uh, I believe argon. I may not have the right ratios, but 75, 25, it's argon and uh, mix for CO2. All right, we've got a cart to put this on. Pick this up at Amazon for 69 bucks. I can carry three welders on there and all the supplies underneath. We also have your ground wire, we take this out. Okay, this gets hooked up to the left side over here because we're running reverse. Plug it in, just plug it in, take a twist, and it's all set. You'll see how nice and long this cord is. It's also very flexible. Nice job that they did with that. And the nice part about this is this will go up to two and a half inches. The yes welder one only goes about that wide and you can't get around a beam. All right, and this is the part right here. You take this off. This is the cap. We're gonna come over here and be very careful when you work with this wire because it's springy and if it springs out and open on you, you're screwed. I'm going to have my camera first to come around here and get in close up in here. Okay, well, I'm going to put the spool on and get my parts I put in my pocket. And the spool. Alright, this comes apart, which I thought was really unique because it makes it easy to switch spools. Take this. And I had to discover this on my own. You shove it in there, but there is a notch, okay, that goes on that one of these two notches. Take it in, you screw it in. And it, it's a reverse thread. Tighten it up. That's out of the way. Down here, pardon me, I'm old, but it takes me a little bit. Okay, we put this on the spool. We're gonna kind of tuck it underneath. This is a up on there. Come on. Okay, it's come through, pokes through. Oops, there was a washer there that fell down. And by the way, don't get anything up in the front of here because that there's a hole on the bottom where the circuit board leads into the other side. So if you get any part up there, you ain't gonna find it without tearing the whole thing apart. Put the spring on. Okay. Actually, I did it wrong. This goes on. Get back off. Okay. You put this spring on. Put this on. And then you put this on. It gets a little tricky. You gotta push pretty hard and screw it in at the same time. Yeah, see? It gets a little tricky. And just tighten it up a couple turns, two or three. You don't need a dead, dead dog tight. Bring your spool around. I happen to have a spool running through. Okay, and that, see we were talking about it 
it blown up on you. There you go. There's an example of how it blows up on you. And it gets to be a mess. It's usually good to have a second pair of hands around for this. Okay. Got my sunglasses off so I can see. Uh, and it blew up. Dang it. Pause. We pull, we, we pull the roll back out. And we're not going to throw all this away. By the way, very handy $12 tool is a welding tool. This is good for your tips. It's also good for, you take this inside your, your big tip and clean things out. Okay, we're going to cut the little end off with the cutters. All right, what we're going to do is use this excess. We're going to pop this down. Okay, and we're going to have to pop that back up a minute. This, since we're using... Right now they're calling 03, they're calling 035 number 9, and they're calling 030 number 8. So we have to switch this roll, roll over to number 8. The roll slides off, and you'll see a number on here. It says 0 .08 right there, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. Right there, you put that facing out to you, there's a notch. Rolling onto the notch. Okay, put the little screw back in. Don't forget to put the screw in like I've done before. I think I've made every mistake that there is to make setting up these machines. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to feed this. Okay, put this up and I like to put this up and out of the way. But the, the, the bar, if you see right here, is up. You put the wire in this little tiny spring thing. Put my sunglasses off so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna feed it up through there. Hopefully it wasn't jam. Try to straighten it out a little bit. It doesn't want to catch on itself. Keep it kind of straight. I'm going to rotate this a little bit more because I'm at a bad angle. And we're going to push it up and through. Hopefully, you don't want to go. Being stubborn. Pause. Mm -hmm. All right, so you see the wire sticking out there. It's got to get in that little little nipple over there. Um, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you don't. Um, let's see, here. Let's see if we okay. We got it in. We lucked out this time. All right, it's gonna come out the other side through here. This is where you take your gun. Pause. Alright, this comes with uh, 035 and 030 tip, lay them there, okay, you take your wire coming out the, the front side, and under the gun, make sure you unroll it, it helps to have somebody stretch it out for you, okay, you run this, take this cap off, unscrew it, and you run right down the middle. Now, if you guys notice, there's three notches here. And there's three notches on the bottom of the setup here. Okay? So, what you got to do is line those notches up. Okay? Come on, camera person. Come over here and look. There's three notches, and there's three notches on the gun. Now, what I like to do is pull this through first, all the way through. And come out the other end before I attach the gun. And consider I had this blow up here, I got a lot of extra wire. And what I did to stop this blow up is I put a piece of electrical tape on the side here to stop this wire, and I, I taped the wire to the side of the spool. 
You got to be patient when you do this because it gets stiffer as you go. And I also take the tip off the other end too when I get there. And by no means am I a professional. I like to build barns. And it's kind of a hobby business of mine. Alright, this is starting to bind up a little bit, so I gotta get up here. And like I said, it's helpful if you got a second pair of hands to do this. You're not twisted all up. Take the cap off. Take the tip off. That's what this is good for. It's got a little tip tip grab. Loosen it up. Unscrew it. And that way the wire feeds through. Okay. The other way to do it, which most people also do, is they run. Okay, we're going to put it in and just run it through with the motor. And here's a neat thing you got to take this and put this on and screw it on. And in this particular machine, I noticed it's a little funky about getting in there. You gotta push real hard to get a bite. Yeah, I'm gonna bite. It seems like on this machine it takes forever. Come on. Pause. Okay. All right, on this gun, there's a little circle up top, or, or basically this, this unit, this bar here, has got to go about, I'd say about 10 o'clock to lock in the pieces, all right? I have had a trouble with this screwing in. It's got to be perfectly aligned. Come on. Now, oh, it seemed like we're on. Damn it. Like I said, my other machine, it's another one of these. I had the same problem. You'll feel when it starts to get a bite. There we go. Even though once you get a bite, jiggle it a little bit and keep going. But the first one I set up, I didn't have a total bite. It seems like once wants to screw on forever. All right, there we go. We finally got tight. That's nice and tight. All right, we're gonna flip the power on. Okay, pause. Here, here's the machine turned on. Um, we're gonna, uh, for some reason, I do not know why, oh, I know why. Okay, here's your settings up top here. Right now it's set for MMA, you hit the circle button, you set it for CO2, MIG, and you hear, you'll hear the, the, the doohickey going, which I gotta seal this up, close it up on the side. Okay, and I'm gonna set it for flux. And the other setting is, I could kind of, kind of hard to see out here in the sunlight. That has one other setting on, on a, about two o'clock. So we're gonna go, but this compared to a yes welder is so much easier. Now we have another setting which is inductance. Okay, uh, I just really learned about this the other day. If you set induct inductance to zero or one, you're gonna get a really crisp, hard, um, you know type of weld where you're gonna see the weld all right uh if you which, which i like to do around here we are doing steel we have horses so we don't want to have any well marks is i set mine up you can set set it for five is medium 
but I set it to 10 because what that's going to do is make it a little more smoother. You also have a 2E, 2T setting, which is, you know, pushing a button, you know, button on and off, or you just want to go to a 4T and make your long runs. 2T is good for spot, uh, spot welding and starting and stopping, and 4T is if you're going to make a lot of long runs. It's just so you don't have to hit the button so much. I'm going to set my settings. I use quarter inch steel pause okay all right i use eighth inch steel and with the eighth inch uh i'm going to tell you right now after trial and error trial and error, a lot of trial and error there's two settings i use if i'm putting lighter stuff to it i use about 100. if i'm doing steel to steel quarter or, or eighth inch to quarter inch or vice versa or eighth inch to eighth inch, so i get a better bike I would suggest maybe going about 10 higher in each one if you're using a 110. All right, so this is the kind of steel we use. If you look around the build, I have my camera show you the, the, the kind of work we do. And all of this is welded all together. All right, now, what I did do is I went in here. Come on, camera person, come back around the side. Okay, I went in there, I closed this up. Okay, and I closed this up. Now that it's tight, I can take the tape off. Okay, and make sure you run that spool backwards a little bit. If you, that gets around the wire and blows all up, your whole rule, your whole spool is shot. Okay, we're gonna run it through here, and it's being stubborn. Why is it not going? All right, you can tighten this up if it's not spinning. And I also loosen this up a little bit if it's not spinning. Tighten this up. I'm putting it on a three. And well, and the other thing to this cord on this gun has to be pretty much clean. So now I'm gonna set the settings tighter to four. And I'm wondering if, if I have the right. No, well, I don't. Pause. All right, folks, I wanted to clarify something. I had this problem on the other machine when I set it up. Is This is an 09 and 08 spool that was in there. I do not know why, but I had a lot of problem with traction with this unit. So the one that comes in the bag, I had a lot better luck with, which is this one here. And you can set this to, this is 08 and also 09. So... But this one has, if you can look at it real close up, it's got little teeth in it. And it gives you a little more bite. So I'm going to set this for 08, which is 030, and 09 is 035. Okay, great. Put the cap back on it. And let's see how she spins. And again, I'm basically a professional novice, okay, so I am an amateur that likes to weld, I do it fairly often, I had to do it for a living when I set up mobile homes, and put stuff I need to pull this down, pop this back on, okay, and then test out how it rolls, see she rolls great now. I don't know what it is about this road now, inside here there's a screw on the bottom, um, I pop this and set this on top of the screw so it doesn't roll away, roll anywhere. All right, so now we got a good roll. Okay, I'm turn it up to get speed. And as you see, it's coming out the end. Okay. Now, granted, folks, this is no uh, Lincoln or Miller. Okay, but it does a pretty good job. Get out one of the new tips. Making sure it's an 030, which I have a hard time seeing. Yep, that's the tip. Goes inside here, screws in. I'd usually screw them in by hand. Uh, I don't like to super tighten them. I just finger tighten them because if I'm out in the field like I am out here, and I don't happen to have my pliers, I can take them back off. Okay, you put the cap back on, you finger tighten this on 
do not wrench this on there. Because otherwise this part bottom part of the gas part will come off. Alright, I also my wire is it likes to what do you call it? Usually cut with a you know pretty close tip. Alright, put I also keep a couple extra tips in the machine. Okay. And there you go. You got running. Close it up. And that's basically the video on opening this settings. Okay. Um, the company's called Tulium. They're a new company to my knowledge. I haven't seen them out there. They're being sold at Amazon. And last I saw they were being sold on sale. I bought this for 262 which is uh, probably $150 less than Yes Welder. Folks, I really believed in Yes Welder, and I believed in how great their tools were. And to be honest with you folks, they are nothing but hype and a bunch of garbage. Okay, so don't buy Yes Welder, because they don't even have a phone number that you can call them on. All right, I thank you today. Good luck with this. Enjoy your new tool.